Hi, I'm Tanner, and I'm with my good friend John, and today we're going to be talking about geothermal energy. Now, geothermal energy, in fact, is very important. But very important indeed. But not a lot of people utilize it because of one major thing. Price. Money. It's very expensive. Well, the starting yeah. cost is very expensive. Money is very expensive. Money is, yes. Especially if you go to Fort Knox and try to take it. So, um... <laughs> but, uh... Yeah. The good thing about geothermal energy is that it cuts down on pollution. In fact, well, it doesn't really cut down on pollution. It just has a fraction of the pollution produced. A fraction. Than, uh, say, fossil fuels, which we are Americans, so we love fossil fuels, driving around in our big cars and whatnot. Big cars. B big cars, yes, like the many Hummers around like where I live. Mini Coopers uh, and two-seat convertibles. And Vespas. And, and uh... Uh, smart cars, all those huge vehicles. Electric Good. bicycles, everything, yeah. Pre-I. So, <laughs> pre pre Prius. Pre Prius. Prius. Yeah, one of those, yeah. The moose. Them Mies. too. They, they really. Mies. They really guzzle gas, those oh moose. Oh my gosh. That's why Canada has a lot of oil supplies. Anyways, um, the good thing about geothermal energy is if it can cut down on. Like the amount of pollution, and if enough people use it, there will not be a lot of pollution around. Actually, it'll be scarce. It'll be an endangered species. Fa imagine that pollution being endangered. We'd have to put it on we, the endangered. Yeah, we'd have to find a special reserve somewhere. And then people might protest it. to actually keep it alive. People still might hunt it down and do stuff like solar energy and other things like that. But who knows? We may even have new problems develop, like poachers. Ooh. of fossil fuels. In fact, you know what I heard? I heard that trees attack pollution. And I think, you know, it's like trophy hunting. Really? They don't, trees? They don't do it for the sport anymore. They just take in pollution. In fact, we stop using fossil fuels and we go down to geothermal energy. I mean, next thing you know, we won't have any pollution around at all. Imagine that. A world without pollution. I can almost see it now, but it's a little smoggy in my head. Ah, damn it. <laughs> um, there are many pros and cons to geothermal energy. Pros and cons. One, as you know, is it's very expensive startup cost. Very expensive. Money is expensive. And especially with wells. In fact, there is an urban legend that in rare cases, wells can cause an earthquake. Which is very, very hard for me to believe, John. That, that is very true. A well can cause an earthquake. You know, Batman actually fell into a well. He, he did? He did. And he emerged from a well as well. Did, did he? Did uh, uh, <laughs> by any chance, did he find any uh, of his signature creatures? Uh, I duck billed locust? Oh, that is very possible. He may have done that. Yeah. I, I, I would have thought so. He, he based his uh, bat belt off of him. Oh, that's true. Um, the good part is, though, about geothermal energy, even though it's expensive at first, it will eventually pay itself off. Eventually it'll pay itself off. Because, up. really, like the hopefully, death. it doesn't run out. That's if true. it does run out, then we have a problem, and we should call your physician. Mm -hmm. and um, Your local physician. Your local physician. Or Not, orthodontist. Don't go far distances for uh, physicians. Mm -hmm. That's just gets too much. It's dangerous, though. It's dangerous. The and danger the plants, is high, folks. In the plants in which they produce geothermal energy, in fact, uh, many of them contain basically steam pipes. Yeah, you got skunk cabbage, uh, duckweed, uh, various other plants with dangerous oh, origins. Uh, oh, yes, yes, but uh, the geothermal plants, which are man-made, by the way, artificial, they have... Um, Steam pipes, and I don't know if you're familiar with older schools or older businesses mm -hmm. that have giant pipes just protruding out of the place, carrying heat into the buildings. In fact, the steam pipes get very hot. Oh yes, I, I they weigh a ton as well. They they do weigh a ton, yes, because they're it takes a lot of pipes to heat a house. Lots of pipes. With this, actually, the good thing about geothermal, if you're using it for your home, there's like different procedures, but then again, it's still pretty expensive to install. Money is expensive. You can keep your original ductwork. You can keep your original ductwork? Yes. Like not the fabricated secondhand stuff? No, like, uh, actually, they do recommend for 
bigger apartments that uh, this could be a good thing for not only is it well it depends where your apartment is mm -hmm. but uh, yeah it could help clean out the duct work and that can sometimes get very messy with all the different things that duct works are for like spies crawling through spies. you know how many times a spy has crawled through the duct duct works here I can tell you it's uh, less than one <laughs> ah, okay see. so um Another great thing about geothermal energy is that the U.S. government has offered tax credits for individuals who use the geothermal energy. Tax credits? Do you mean the government is actually backing this? The government is indeed backing this. Wow. Which is a great thing. I'm Well, it's a lot safer than nuclear energy, I can tell you that. That's true. They have had recent nuclear uh, power plant spills. Yes, just in America, and there's that famous one in Japan. Terrible stuff. Um, uh, what another thing, as I found out for homes, is uh, apparently they focus on the scenery a lot. People like it because they get rid of their old condensers, <clears throat> which they use to heat and cool the home. In fact, uh, geothermal for the home, it's mm -hmm. like a series of different pipes that go underground yes, to a separate area, pipeline. Separate pipelines, and they. It's almost like uh, in a cave, how it's warm in the winter and cold in the summer. Mm -hmm. Kind of like it, an igloo, too. Uh, yeah, like an igloo, except uh, you don't see too many around here during the summer, unfortunately. No, that's fine. I will try to make that change, though. Yeah, polar bears have moved out for the summer. <laughs> Indeed, they have. Um, another uh, one thing that people hate to see is that you actually get a little bit of a loop. Oh, a loop. You get, you get a loop, and they have to dig out that area to place the tubing, mm -hmm. and people don't like the looks of it. They don't? Uh, not, at a, not in the slightest bit. Hmm. They think it is hideous. Rather on But, would you rather use that, or the remains of uh, many, many plants and bacteria smushed together to make oil and quote-unquote fossil fuels? That is a good point. Now, there are cheaper energies, such as solar powered energy, mm -hmm. like solar panels, but those can be pretty expensive to install. They can be terribly expensive. But, I think, in the spirit of Captain Planet, if we combined all those resources together, we would have the ultimate house. The ultimate house. <clears throat> in fact, um, I think it's in Iceland. America does produce the most geothermal technology. I, uh, Iceland uses a lot of that technology, but they produce more energy. Really? Yeah. Um, there was a um, Bizarre Foods episode where Anthony went to this one restaurant mm -hmm. and he basically cooks his food from geothermal vents. Really? Well, the, the restaurant does. They use uh, different steam pipes and you know how long it can take to boil water on like a regular gas stove? Mm -hmm. It took them basically, I think they said, uh, Possibly 0.7 seconds to boil water using the steam. 0.7 seconds. Yes. That is indubitably fast. So that's almost instantly that it begins to steam. Now, it also depends on the quantity of water that you use, but mm -hmm. uh, they're pretty fond of that in Iceland. Wow. In fact, I think we should start starting this sort of like... Uh, not a lot of people know about geothermal energy, to be quite frank with you, even though my name's not Frank. Um, yeah. Yeah. Did it you get a lot of, you get a lot more options with geothermal than Ma you do with like regular heat and cooling. Your thermostat, you get more options. You get just a lot, a lot of different things, mm -hmm. a lot of benefits. Yeah. And if you fully deck out your house in geothermal gear, attire, I'd say, mm -hmm. um, yeah, you're pretty much set. You don't have to worry. Uh, for homes, it's very low maintenance. All you have to do is change. Low. A filter. But if you are working in a geothermal power plant, I wouldn't recommend saying to your boss that it's low maintenance because it's very high maintenance and it can be possibly very dangerous if you don't keep appropriate things. So don't That's open true. up a geothermal power plant in your backyard without taking the necessary risks involved. Mm -hmm. um, there are, of course, different websites you can go to. Mm -hmm. uh, RenewableEnergyWorld.com geoenergy.org and geothermal.org are just a few of those websites. Uh, usually you want to go to the .orgs or .edus uh, 
tend to stray away from wiki because a lot of people can change such things like that. That is true. And so wiki's not a good response, but I'm not here to make a public service announcement. I'm here to talk about geothermal energy, mm-hmm. which in the long run is one of the best options. Um, because it is. It's more efficient than the others from what I've researched. You can get a lot done with geothermal, and it's great. You should try it sometime. In fact, I encourage everybody to try it once they save up enough enough money, because it can it can be really expensive to install that things in. It's like uh, sometimes it's over nine grand. Nine grand is usually cheap for it. Yeah, on the cheaper side. In fact, um, another geothermal invention that people don't really realize was a doghouse. Really? They made an underground, basically an underground doghouse, and because once you dig a little bit underground, and of course I, that, that's a window over there, just in case you were wondering what I was looking at, so I can see outside. Um, once you dig deep enough, uh, the temperatures remain constant. Really, constant temperature. The lower constant around like six, 60 to seventy degrees. That is constant. Um, Alaska, you might have to dig a little deeper <laughs> because there's a big amount of permafrost, but around here you don't really have to dig too deep. Huh. Uh, I'd assume even less in deserts to find the warm Probably, soil. I would think so. Yeah. But anyways, that kind of wraps up our use of geothermal energy. Mm-hmm. If you have any more questions, you can contact your teacher, uh, especially if she's a teacher that is teaching me currently. Mm-hmm. Indeed. And if you don't have any more questions, I hope you enjoyed the video. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the episode. Do you have anything to add, John? Well, in conclusion, geothermal energy is definitely something to look into. And also, it may very well be the bright future of the world. So you may want to get in on it soon. And also, you might want to be one of the cool people that said you were in on geothermal energy before it was cool. Yes, you want to be the first. Just like in Mario Kart. Well, until next time, this is Tanner and John signing off. Cheerio.